Hey y'all, it's Sneak and we're back with another video. Today we're gonna be doing a what to pack in your bag when you're getting ready for weight loss surgery. If you don't know me, my name is Monique and I have been successful with weight loss surgery. I had surgery March 2nd of 2020, so I'm coming up on my two year surgery. I've been able to maintain my weight of about 153 pounds to 160 pounds for a year now. And if you follow me, you'll be able to follow me on the journey of maintaining my weight and encouraging you guys to do the same. If you're new here, welcome to the family and let's jump right into it. Don't forget to grab your pen and notepad and let's take some notes on this checklist. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the basics. So you wanna start with a dry mouth mouthwash. A dry mouth mouthwash will allow you to hydrate your mouth when it gets dry. The reason why you wanna have a dry mouth mouthwash is because you won't be able to drink enough fluids to stay hydrated. So you may feel uncomfortable if your throat starts getting dry, or your tongue starts drying out or something like that because you can't drink enough fluids. And prior to surgery, I don't know about you guys, but for me, they had me drinking gallons of water. So your body is now accustomed to drinking those gallons of water a day. You want to drink it, but you can't because your stomach physically cannot hold all of that water. So a good thing to bring with you is dry mouth mouthwash. I use Biotene. You also want to bring the Biotene mouth spray just in case you can't get up and down. You don't want to stand up all the time. You may feel... You know, you did just get surgery, you have incisions on your stomach, and your stomach has a lot of muscles in it. So your stomach is muscles for walking or doing any of your simple day-to-day -day tasks, and it will be painful to get up and down all the time to use your dry mouth mouthwash and spit it out. So you may just want to get a dry mouth spray as well to bring with you. So you can keep it bedside and just spray your mouth when you want to. Next up for the basics, also bring a chapstick. Your lips will get dry because, again, you will not have enough fluids to continuously drink water and replenish yourself. So just go ahead and bring a nice chapstick, a nice hydrated chapstick to go ahead and put on your lips throughout the day. Next up, we want to make sure that those phones, tablets, iPads, MacBooks, a Kindle, whatever device you bring with you, make sure you have the charger. Pack your charger. Pack your charger. Don't forget it. Don't forget it, it's something small, but I'm here to remind you, pack your charger, girl. Along with bringing any device that you want to entertain yourself, you may also wanna bring maybe a coloring book or a journal. If you are documenting your journey, please bring a journal. Bring a journal so that you're able to tell what is going on, how you're feeling. You know, if you have your phones, you know, we have our phones now, so we record everything. But sometimes a little handwritten note won't hurt a little bit. Along with bringing a journal or a coloring book, you may just want to read a book. Pick up on a new book if you want. My favorite book right now is Sorry I'm Late, I Didn't Want to Come. That is the introverted story and I love it. So if you want to check that out, I also have that link. Next, you want to make sure that you have a nice pair of headphones. If you are trying to do an audio book or if you want to just listen to your music, it's something to soothe you while you go to sleep. Um... I would bring headphones. I love my noise canceling AirPod Pros. They're amazing, especially with the hospital. You'll hear a lot of hustle and bustle around on the floor. So you want to make sure that you bring headphones so that you're able to concentrate on getting your rest. Rest is where your body repairs itself, so resting is important. You may get waken up by your nurses in the middle of the night, so you probably still want headphones. Also, do not forget your HIPAA cleanse. HIPAA cleanse is an antibacterial soap. You may have to use it prior to even coming to the surgery room, but make sure that you bring HIPAA cleanse with you because you will have to wash up and shower. You can bring a HIPAA cleanse for your stomach area because you don't want to put like Dove or scented soaps on there. So go ahead and bring HIPAA cleanse or another antibacterial soap like Dial. Dial is good as well. Speaking of the bathroom, also you want to bring wipes. Um, if you're a lady, you may want to bring feminine towelettes. <clears throat> don't forget your deodorant. If you have to, if you have an extended stay, you may want to bring shampoo, conditioner. You also want to bring a travel size toothbrush and toothpaste as well. While we're talking about the small things you have to bring, you may need an extension cord depending on how many products you have. Sometimes the cable will be all the way on the other side. You're laying in the middle, so you don't want to, again, turn over, reach over, you know, get an extension cord so that you can bring it closer to you, plug in all of your devices, and you have them more conveniently located. Don't forget things to do your hair, like a hair tie, a brush. Don't forget your scarf, your bonnet. Also bring poopery. 
because you never know what's going on. Your stomach is filled, it's pumped with gas, so you will have gas pains. So you may start gassing, bring poopery just to be safe. Poopery. So now we got all of the necessities out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to some things that will make you feel more comfortable. During your stay at the hospital, you want to wear something comfortable. That can be a sports bra, a nightgown, slippers. You don't want anything too heavy or too harsh on your skin. For me, my scars, if I was to put some leggings on, sometimes it didn't like it. It would feel real iffy. It didn't want me to sit down. I couldn't put a band on. They gave us a binder. And that binder may even be too uncomfortable for you. So make sure that you bring loosely fitted clothes. I have a ton of them tagged in on my, on my Amazon storefront that you can choose from. Decide what you like. But I would recommend bringing sweatpants, a big jacket, a big shirt, anything that's not going to be too tight on your stomach because that can get too uncomfortable. As far as bras go, I recommend one that can zip it up in the front. My body did not like being pulled around and trying to pull it over my head or buckle it up in the back. Again, you want to use your stomach muscles as little as possible in the beginning. Do not stress them out. Don't use them too much. They're trying to heal. So you want a bra that will zip it up in the front so that you don't have to constantly lift up and down and put on shirts and do all that stuff. Relax, get a robe. You can throw on a robe, tie it in the front, have your bra zipping in the front, and you'll be all good. While you're at the hospital, you also may not want to wear hard bottom shoes. You can get shower shoes, um, sandals, flip flops. You can wear your house slippers in the hospital. Whatever makes you feel most comfortable, and you want something that you can just slide on in. You don't, again, you do not want to be bending down, bending over, tying your shoes, loosening them up. You don't want to do all that. Your stay time can vary depending on if it's medically necessary. I only had to stay in the hospital for one night and one day. By the night time, they get you up, they get you moving, and that's why you want to go ahead and have a nice robe or soft slippers to go ahead and comfort your feet and your body while you're moving around. Also, you want to make sure that your underwear are like high-waisted underwear or you want boxer brief underwear. You want something that'll be comfortable, something that can hold your stomach in because you may need a little bit of compression. Wear compression underwear with a loose fitted shirt and you'll be good. I also recommend a body size pillow. This is mine right here. I still have it even after surgery. I love it. So get a body size pillow so that you can cuddle up with it. You can maneuver it how you want to make sure that you're laying comfortably. Get a body size pillow, y'all. Also, you want to get a heating pad. So you will have pain and pressure. Um, so with the heating pad, I would lay down, put a blanket on top of my stomach, and then put the heating pad on top of the blanket. Just so that I don't have that direct heat, but I do have the blanket and then the heating pad. It relaxes your muscles amazingly. I also recommend getting a small wallet. You want a small wallet so that you're able to have your products Handy, you want your ID, your medical cards, anything that you have, you want all of that with you as well. Nice and close to you. You do not have to bring another purse with your sleeping bag. You don't need all of that unless you have an extended stay. If you do have an extended stay, then I would recommend bringing a purse with all of your personal belongings and then your clothes and all of your toiletries in another bag. You don't have to go out and buy a new duffel bag, but I went out and brought me a new duffel bag. So I'll go ahead and attach pictures of some other duffel bags that you can get. This way you bring one bag, stuff it up, pack it up, and be good. I prefer to have a duffel bag so that you can have one bag and just stuff it up with everything that you need in one bag. So if you are traveling because some people don't get surgery in their state or even in this country, you may want to opt to get a nice duffel bag so that you can put everything in one bag. We are nearing the end of the video and you may wonder why I haven't mentioned bringing any Tylenol or any protein shakes or anything of the sort. You don't need them. When you're in the hospital, they provide you with your first protein shake, your first cup of broth. They also provide you with your medicines, so you don't have to bring them unless the doctor tells you to bring them. Do not waste your at-home materials bringing them to the hospital because then you end up having to buy them again when you get back home. So leave those at home, 
go to your appointment you can bring your multivitamin and do not forget to bring your lung exercise your lung exerciser will be very much so needed you need it after you get out of surgery to make sure that your body is still functioning properly be sure to bring any cpap machines if you have breathing machines bring that with you as well do not forget it in your bag any medicine that is necessary to you bring with you if you told your doctor about it already they should have given you directions on what to bring and what to leave at home i will say you can bring one protein shake just in case they have a flavor you don't like and you still want to try it bring one protein shake remember your stomach is going to be this big your stomach is this big you cannot eat that much you do not need to bring too much of your home food from the house to the hospital don't do it. It makes your bag heavy and you do not want to have your bag going home. If you guys have any more suggestions on what else to pack in the bag, go ahead and comment down below so we all can take notes on what else to bring. I hope I made it quick and easy to the point, guys. Good luck on your surgery. Please let me know how it goes. I cannot wait to see you guys' stories and see how well you are doing in the future. Good luck. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.